Okay. Let's turn the light on. And here we've got tallow that has previously been rendered from beef fat. And I keep it in the freezer. Probably don't have to, but I do. Uh, let's put it on. We're just going to put it on low heat. And that's, I don't know, half a cupish. No lard. And we're also going to use half a cupish of this. It's cold and hard. Mm. I don't know, half a cupish. Sure. Looks like half a cup to me. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay. Peanut butter. It's just store brand, but we look and there is no sodium benzoate and no uh, BHT. I'll just throw that on the floor. We're going to use roughly a cup of peanut butter. Crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Just fling it in there. Smells good, doesn't look very appealing. Oh, uh, let's see. Cupish? Sure. We're using the TLAR system of measurement. That looks about right. There we go. Tallow is in the freezer, so it's going to take the longest. And as it softens, <laughs> not yet, I'll break it up. And while this is melting, we're going to go over and put together the dry ingredients. All right, this is the land of dry ingredients. Let's put the lard in the fridge. Okay. Whole wheat flour. Don't have to use whole wheat, but I do. Cornmeal. Rolled oats. Not quick cooking. You want the big stuff like this. Cracked corn, I just buy it in bulk. Fancy bird seed. If you look at this stuff, it does have a few shells in it, but it's. Ah. Mostly shelled. Sunflower seeds, peanuts, pumpkin seed, mystery nuts and a little bit of fruit. Oh, and safflower. Okay. Again, we're going to use the TLAR system of measurement. And we want about half a cup of whole wheat flour. This is a one cup measure. Oops, a little more than I needed, but eh. Birds aren't that fussy. About half a cup of cornmeal. That looks about right. Roughly a cup ish of rolled oats. Don't have to be fussy. We're going to start with a cup of 
of the bird seed. It'll take more cup. Yeah, yeah, sure. Cup in a little bit. There you go. Now, just a little bit of cracked corn. There's some corn in the bird seed, not a whole bunch. Woodpeckers like cracked corn. Uh, some. There we go. Some cracked corn. Man, I hope this is going to work. Oh dear. Oh, and now some very heavy poultry grit. And I don't know, a little bit. Some. Some more. Eh, a little bit more. There. That's just poultry grit feed store. Okay. And now we need a spoon. We'll mix all this stuff up together. The cornmeal and flour want to go to the bottom. That's okay. Ooh, what's that big lump? Ooh, raisins. I don't know, giant raisin. Okay, somebody gets a raisin blob. All right. Go over and get the fats a stir. Oops. Okay. We'll leave this while the fat finishes melting. Okay, we're back in Fatville. Making progress. You want to make sure that everything is melted and everything's stirred up. Tallow's kind of slow. It smells good. It smells very peanut buttery. If I was a bird, I'd eat this. I'd almost eat it myself if I didn't know what was in it. Just a few more minutes. But you didn't know you were going to do something this interesting. Let's watch fat melt. Ooh. Ah. Almost there. Okay. Fat's all melted. So we're going to give this one last fluff. Make a well in the middle. Ooh. Okay. Here's our well blended fat. It smells fantastic. Just pour it in the well. Peanuts. Probably got this a little bit runny, but that's okay. Okay. And then just stir it all together. Oh, maybe I don't have it too runny. No. Looks pretty good. A big clump of raisins. Somebody's somebody who likes fruit is going to be lucky. There, there we go. And you want it kind of the consistency of a kind of oatmeal-ish. If it's too dry, it's going to be brittle, and it's going to crack off and land on the ground. If it's too runny, it's going to be hard to work with. So that looks good. Now a spoon. Ooh. I use these plastic sandwich containers. They're a little bit bigger. You can save these too. And I do occasionally use them, but they're a little bit bigger. So 
so they don't fit into the block feeders, but that doesn't matter because I cut these up into bars and then I stuff them into log feeders. Okay. Spoony spoon. Uh, and try not to get it all over the place like I just did. About an inch thick. Ish. Everything is ish. We're not very precise in the feathered freeloader kitchen. We are kind of messy. I guess. Okay. Now, we're actually going to make a special one when we finish. Hmm. Probably should have made some more, but that's okay. It's okay. That's good enough. See, it's the consistency. That should hold together fairly well. Eh, that one's a little fat. Let's take some out of that. Just a touch. Yep, there we go. Okay, now I have raccoons that I like to call trash pandas and Patrick likes to call washing bears, but I don't want them in my feeders. So, we make a special small cake with the leftovers. What we have here is a little container. And for the love of God, I'm not going to breathe, breathe this. This is ground ghost and maruga scorpion pepper, which is uh, about 20 times hotter. I put cayenne in and they basically laughed at me. Ha ha, we're going to eat it anyway. So, I got some extremely hot peppers and we're going to put in this little bit I'll put about this much and this stuff is hot this stuff is like hot you don't even want to touch it without gloves voice of experience and we'll stir that in the birds are troubled not in the least no matter how hot this stuff is the birds don't care their uh, capsaicin receptors don't work very well so as long as it's not dusty and so they can breathe it, and this is not dusty, it's greasy. Okay, and we're gonna make this one in this little container because this does go in a feeder that the raccoons can reach. They can reach it, but they, they won't eat it. Squirrels won't eat it either. It's very, very hot. I do have one downy woodpecker that seems to have developed a taste for extremely hot peppers. He loves that feeder. Okay. Mm, there. This is just a little one. This is just enough. My goal here is to teach the trash pandas that suet is hot. They don't need to know not all suet is hot. There we go. Okay. And that's basically it. Now I'm going to set everything aside. Eat more. Just set these aside and let them cool to room temperature. And then once the room temperature, they can go into the fridge. And I like the sandwich covers. Keep everything, keep stuff out of it, and keep uh, keep them nice and clean. So that's it. Gourmet suet.